All right, good morning. I'm uh, Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and um, this video we're going to talk about uh, stitching what's called the gunslinger pattern um, onto a belt. Uh, this is what the gunslinger pattern looks like when it's stitched. Um, there are different variations. You can make the little loops, you know, more uh, more steep and things like that. But this is uh, this is the one that we uh, we came up with. Um, this is a practice piece I did in last night's um, Monday night video that we did uh, live on Facebook and Instagram. Um, but uh, today we're going to draw one out and uh, and put it on this uh, English bridle strap that I have set aside here. Um, and then we're going to do another uh, follow on video after this on um, actually making a belt and the sizing and, and things like that. So if, if you haven't made very many belts or if you've never made one even, um, that, that video may help you out. Um, so, uh, there's, there's, there's different ways of laying out this pattern. Let me, uh, I forgot to grab me a little scrap piece here. This is just a piece of an uh, inch and a half strap. Most belts are an inch and a half wide. Um, that's kind of the common size for them. Um, so that's, that's what this strap is. It's, it's an inch and a half. Now, when it comes to drawing your your scallops on there, all that all that really is is just scallops going up and up and up, and then you turn the belt over and you do them again. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna move the camera down because you don't need to see my face; you need to see my bench. And uh, all right, that's gonna help with the light. So anyway, like I said, these are just these are just scallops that go um, like little rainbows, I guess. And then at the end, I just kind of rounded it off and went back the other way with it. Um, there, you, you can draw this on without any kind of fancy equipment or anything like that. Um, the, the best thing to find, I tried to find one before last night's video, but I couldn't. Uh, is just a, a template with, um, with, with big ovals on it, you know, and you figure out which size oval you want to use. Um, when I do mine, I make sure that it stays a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the belt because... Um, here's the belt I made yesterday as I designed the, the, the stitch pattern. It has stitch lines um, going down the sides because that's the construction of the belt itself. Um, so on this belt, I, I put the whole thing together and then sewed all these stitches. So on the back side, you can see them all. But on this, this belt that I'm making for the next video, I'm going to go ahead and do the gunslinger pattern stitch. And then I'll glue it to the other belt or the, the liner and I'll stitch the, the outside, the border stitches. And that will clean up the inside a lot. It'll make it to where it doesn't have so many stitches on the inside. Um, not a huge deal, but it does have a really nice uh, cleaner appearance if we do it that way. Um, so yeah, uh, Y'all know me. Um, I'm going to I'm going to find an easier way to do it. So I I made a template on on how to how to draw this pattern out. Um, I didn't cut myself a long enough piece of this. Dig um, well, barely, I guess. So anyway, this template shaped like this. It's got a couple of lines on it. One of them you can see right there, quarter of an inch in from the edge. And then the other one, if I can get it angled right so you can see it. Anyway, there's another light, very light line that goes right down the center of it there. Um, both of those lines are pretty important. The, the one that's a quarter of an inch from the edge um, actually goes on the edge of your strap when you go to draw this on. Now, I'm going to use a pen right now to do this, but on my finished project, this is just a, a sample piece to show you the drawing and everything, I'm going to use a pen to draw it on there, but on my belts, I would never use a pen. I'd just use a stylus or something to, to mark these lines. Um, using a pen, then your, your stitching won't cover it up. I mean, you can see in this one, I, I used a pen last night. You can still see black lines everywhere under that stitch. So I'm just going to mark it off where the scallops are here. And there should be. There's half of it. Okay, so just like I said, we're gonna turn it over now. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, this is where this center line comes in real handy. You want this center line to line up with the point of the, the scallop that you already made there, and that's what helps keep it to where, because you don't want the 
the points of it, one up here, and then the other one is down, but over a little bit, it just, it won't look right. So this helps us keep it um, um, straight and aligned and where it's supposed to be. I am going to use a sewing machine in this video. Um, you could you could very easily hand sew this. I wouldn't recommend using um, pricking irons or anything like that. I would I would recommend using an overstitch wheel to mark your holes and then go back with an awl because it's constantly curving and it would just be a real pain in the butt to use you know a two prong chisel or iron and try to follow that curve. It would just take forever as opposed to using using an overstitch wheel such as this one right here and rolling it along and making your your stitch marks just like that um, I know that's probably hard to see but there's those little stitch marks that that just made all right so now that I have um, kind of shown how this works I'm gonna actually do it on my strap here so I'm not going to use the pen I'm going to use the stylus um, so here's my, my snap holes. Again, we're going to do another video, um, here in a few minutes after this one. And, um, it'll be on the actual measuring and construction and, 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 um, what all goes into making a belt. But this one, this video, we're just doing, um, the stitch pattern. So here's my snap holes for the snaps for the little fold over area here. Okay. Um, and I'm going to stop just short of them. I mean, I don't need to stitch through that area because when I poke, punch those holes, um, I need to be able to, uh, I don't, I, I, I can't punch those holes through the stitches. So I have to be careful. So I just stop it short of them. Um, okay. Now, one thing I do want to talk about here is right here at the end of this, this stitch pattern where it's going to stop. I'm not going to go all the way up and finish that that pattern because at the very end of it there, I want to round it off like this one is right here. It'll give it a nice finished look if I do that. So I'm going to start right there and work my way around with my stylus here. Okay, um, there's the first set of lines. Um, very light but visible uh, there. So all I'm gonna do is, is move my little pattern down and keep on going. Again, this, this particular template is made for an inch and a half belts, but I think I'm gonna make these in a, in a set of three so that people can use them on a, uh, a one and three quarter inch belt and also a two inch belt. Um, this actually looks really nice on a one and three quarter inch belt. It's just that's not a very popular size for belts. And then for a two inch belt, that would be like an actual um, gun carrying rig, like an outer belt that doesn't go through your uh, um, belt loops. All right, so now we've done it twice and we just keep lining it up as we go down. Here's the third iteration of the, of the tracing. And um, just like at the very end back here, I've got to pay attention to where um, this is going to stop. I've got my holes. I, I don't have a punch, but I've got a mark to where my holes for my, my billet end are going to be. And um, I need to make sure I stop short of those because, I, again, I don't want to sew or, uh, yeah, sew in that area um, because I... Uh, the holes might interfere with the, the stitch pattern or the stitch pattern may interfere with the holes as however you want to look at it. Okay. So here I am down at the other end now. And again, I'm going to stop it short so that I can, um, so that I can just round off that very edge. I'm just going to kind of guess and stop it right there. I can move it a little bit more if I need to. So now I'm going to flip this sucker over and I'm going to go back down the other side. Doing the exact same thing, making sure to line up this center line with the points that I've already drawn. You want those points to be nice and sharp.
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a quarter here. And right here at the very end, I'm going to use this quarter as a... Uh, actually, I'm not going to use a quarter. It's a little bit too big. Let me grab a little hole punch that's smaller than a quarter. All right. So here's a 7 8 inch hole punch, and I'm going to use it to draw around. I'm not pushing down hard. I don't want it to cut my, cut my leather at all. I'm just going to use it to kind of draw around here so that I can figure out the rounded part of my, uh, my stitch there at the end. All right, so there it is. Now, back to business. I'm just going to continue on tracing my uh, tracing my lines, keeping my points lined up, and making sure the edge of the belt is still right there at that other line too. Find my stylus here. Couple more scallops to go. All right, so here I am at the other end now. And again, I'm just going to stop it a little bit short so that I can round off that edge there and make it a continuous loop that goes around the belt over and over. There should be. All right, so this sucker is ready to stitch. Um, you can see the pattern there. Uh, goes all the way down from, from buckle end to billet end. And uh, if you'll give me a minute, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get my sewing machine set up and, uh, and somewhere that the camera can see it well. And um, we'll, we'll get to stitching this sucker. Okay, so I moved my uh, sewing machine over here where we could get a glimpse of it and everything. And then also I, I turned off the light because when I have it on, like, you can't see a dang thing. So I'm just going to turn it off and have it out of the way and hopefully my old eyes will work. Um, the machine's on. One of the first things I always do is we got to check the bobbin. If there's not a full bobbin in here, I don't even want to start. And it's full enough. All right, so got the machine on, even though it feels like it's not on because the light's not on. <laughs> lights are on, but nobody's home. And I'm just going to start, and I'm going to follow that line. Um, luckily, this is a Cobra Class 18. It's a, a lightweight flatbed sewing machine um, capable of up to about uh, a little over a quarter of an inch. Um, so, I mean, this belt is absolutely no problem for it. Um, anyway, but what I love about the Cobras all have the, the open toe, um, center foot here. So that open toe, it, it's just, it's like a split and I can just run it right along that line and it, um, and, uh, it, it's almost like the, the crosshair is on a rifle and, um, or the sights on a rifle. So here we go. I'm using size 138 natural thread on this little project. Um, I think it looks pretty good. 
at this size and weight and at this many stitches per inch, uh, it's probably six stitches per inch, maybe seven. Um, I don't want the thread to be too heavy because then it'll just kind of overpower this pretty leather here. This is a chestnut um, English bridle from Wicked Craig. All right, I'm coming up to one of the points here. Okay, so far all I've had to do is follow a curve, but I'm coming up to a point here now. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of hand wheel it and see. I want that last stitch to be right at the, the exact top of that point. Otherwise, the point will be rounded looking, and we don't want that. So I'm just kind of hand wheeling it in, and I'm going to use my leg to lift the presser foot and adjust it just a tiny bit if needed. This is the hard part to do without my leg. All right, so there we are. Let this machine down. So there we are. Um, we are at the point. So now I'm going to uh, make sure that that needle has gone all the way down, come a little bit back up. That helps the, uh, the shuttle hook come around and grab that top thread. I'm going to rotate the belt because, again, we're at a point, and I'm going to go down to and follow the next scalp. It's really funny, this whole thing happened because I'm gonna, I have a new pistol I'm gonna start carrying. Um, well, not new, but I um, have a different pistol I'm gonna start carrying. I had to make a holster for it. So I thought, well, new holster needs a new belt. And that's what started the whole, hey, we should do this gunslinger thing and make a video. All right, back to a point again. So I'm gonna, Adjust that stitch just a tiny bit and get in there. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and sew down the rest of this belt. And then uh, when I start coming around the other side, I'll unpause the video. And um, that way you're not just watching me do the exact same thing over and over. But uh, when we start coming back across, that's when the pattern really comes out. And, um, and you'll be able to see it. All right, so I sewed down the entire side, uh, one side of the belt, so you can see the scallops and everything there. Um, and now I'm going back down the other side. Um, the only real thing I wanted to point out by going down the other side is, when you get to the point where the lines, the stitch lines cross, um, me personally, I don't really, using a sewing machine, I, I don't worry about you know, do, do both threads go down into the same hole? Um, if I were hand stitching, I could assure you that they would, but on a sewing machine, it just seems like a lot to keep up with to, uh, to, 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 to worry about whether or not those, uh, those intersecting lines share a, uh, a hole. So... All right, here I am at a point again. That one actually will end up just perfectly. Um, real important when using a sewing machine, when you're doing the curving and, uh, and when you're doing a point, um, always try to rotate the belt while the needle is in the down position. Reason for that is um, it'll help keep your stitch lengths um, consistent. Uh, when going around the curve, if you're going around what I saw call an outside curve where the, uh, the, um, the, the, the uh, convex side of the curve is on the inside of the machine, um, if, you're, if you're not careful, then your stitch length will get really long while you're turning. Um, same goes for the opposite. If the, if the outside of the curve was out here on the outside of the machine, and I go to turn it, and I'm not doing it while the needle's down, then the stitch length will get really, really short. So that's why when you watch me, I'm trying to make all my turns 
while the needle is down in the leather. Lucky again, that stitch, uh, stitch stopped right in the point. It's awesome. Love it when a plane comes together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again, finish selling this out, and when we come back, I'll be back over here at the workbench. All right, so we're done with our stitch. It goes all the way down this big old belt, because like I said on last, last night's video, this belt's bigger than it should be. It fits me, but that still means it's bigger than it should be. Um, so anyway, uh, that part is done. So that's basically it for the, the gunslinger pattern. Um, when I got back here to the very end, I just, just like if I was sewing anything else, I went back over my first couple of stitches again, just to, to, um, lock that, that first and last stitch in. And, um, I'll clean up any track marks that the sewing machine presser foot might've left. It looks pretty good. I don't, I don't really think there needs to be any, but I'll look around. Um, but on to the next video where we will build this belt. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and uh, we really appreciate y'all's uh, support. And um, any of the items that you've seen in this video can be found at makersleathersupply.com. Have a great day.